Hello, it's Friday, August the 7th, and we are in chapter 6 again today of Proverbs, verses 16 through 19. It's going to be a passage you've heard before. It's a very familiar one, and there's a, a wonderful um, warning, exhortation, challenge, and a very profound um, truth in this. And let, let's see what it says, then we'll talk about it. These six things the Lord hates. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. This passage begins with an, an unusual phrasing, and it's an idiom of the day to say there's six things the Lord hates and there's seven that's an abomination. It's, it's a way of saying these seven things are really bad. It's just uh, the vernacular of that day was to put it in that phrasing. It doesn't mean the first six things are really bad, but this last one is absolutely terrible. It means all seven are, are bad. And they all relate to, mostly, how we relate to other people. The duplicity, the dishonesty, the deceit, the anger, the wrath, the vindictiveness, the, the, uh, the scheming that we often use as we interact with other people that um, Solomon denounces here. So a proud look. That is your own perspective of how you see yourself and how you see the world. You and I will always respond to others based upon our worldview and our self-view. Our worldview should be how we see God and how we see His creation and our place in it. Our self-view is how we view ourselves in terms of importance, to the point that Paul tells us to view others better than ourselves. That doesn't mean we're to put ourselves down, but to, to view their needs maybe even their aspirations and their projects as equal to our own or to prefer them above our own, which is why he and both Peter tell us to be courteous and kind and to be selfless. So a proud look and then a lying tongue. And a lying tongue usually is to protect, done to protect the pride of the individual who's doing the speaking. We lie to obtain what we want or to protect and shield something we want to hide. Hands that shed innocent blood and a heart that devises wicked plans. So the hands are the action, the ones that do it. The heart devises it. The Bible says God hates that. So even to sit out and plan harm towards another individual, God hates that, as well as the hands that carry it out. And then feet that are swift and eagerness and excitement about being involved in evil. That bothers God that sense of energy and passion for doing wrong, and then a false witness who speaks lies. Not just to deceive somebody, but about the person. Saying bad things about other people, which leads to sowing discord among the brethren. As David wrote in the Psalms, how, how beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Well, here the opposite is given, that it's an abomination to sow discord among people who are bonded together. These are all warnings for us. And I would say you should read through that again and ask God to help you refrain from being that, thinking that, or doing that. Any of these things that are listed as these seven things that really disturbs God. Because if there's one thing that you and I want to do as believers is please our Heavenly Father. So let's begin by refraining from doing what He doesn't like and then doing what he does like. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the wisdom of Solomon and his uh, insight, his experience, and his perceptiveness to let us know that the things that often disturb you the most about our lives are the, the way we see ourselves and the way we see others, the way we treat them and take advantage of them and use them and, and uh, deceive them. Um, Help us instead to be honest and to be kind and to be gracious and not devise ways to hate people or take advantage of people. And may our hands uh, not do wicked things and our, may our feet not be swift and running to the opportunity to do wicked things. But instead, help us to live for righteousness. And Father, we depend upon you to do that because our nature carries us the other way. So we ask for your spirit to prompt us to live for you. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you, and we've made it through Friday, and tomorrow is Saturday, the day before church. So we'll see you tomorrow.